Welcome back to the broadcast. Well, when your child is sick, you can feel helpless in many ways, and that's why parents like me turn to the web for a diagnosis, right, that's Amy? Right. So while you can find helpful information out there, it can also throw you off course in many ways. And our sister show, Take Charge Parenting Pediatrician, Dr. Sue Hubbard, joins us with tips on how to keep this situation balanced. That's a great word, balance. balance. I have to admit, I have not been the mom that likes to go online and diagnose my child because... Bravo. Because when my baby was little, my firstborn was six weeks old, he was diagnosed with RSD, but they were thinking it might be cystic fibrosis. And I had a friend that went online and read all this horrific stuff, and she called me crying saying, <gasps> he might die. Oh, well, I see, diagnosed my kids at least 20 times with cancer because they had a runny nose. Because oh, we darn. said that when you go to Dr. Google, which I always say, mm -hmm. went to a different medical school than I did, mm -hmm. it will often give you many good things, but at the same time it leads you down a very uh, bad path often to, but this toenail infection could be cancer. Right. <laughs> and, and then and that some broken of those, arm could be cancer. Some of these websites are giving you really specific like um, symptom checkers and stuff right. like that. So you can even go through the motions of doing all that and come up with something completely wrong. So how do we um, avoid the wrong websites and how to not get in this trap of well, overdiagnosing? I think number one, you need to make sure that you go to credible websites mm -hmm. that have accurate information given by professionals. So right. I shouldn't be out there giving cooking lessons. Mm -hmm. And other people shouldn't be out there giving medical advice. And many mothers and parents like to put things on the web um, which are not or more anecdotal mm -hmm. than actual fact. And much of uh, medicine is based on science, so you want to go to good websites that are reliable. Yes, um, websites right often there. you want to use one that either ends in edu because that may be associated with a medical yeah. school, but mm -hmm. I like WebMD, the Mayo Clinic, AAP.org, which is the American Academy of Pediatrics, Children's.com, and of course our website, KidsDR.com. Often, though, I think it's helpful if you've narrowed the search. So if you're doctor tells you your child does have cystic fibrosis, then I think it might be good to go onto the web and go to a reputable site about cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And some of the forums with parents for children that do have a syndrome or a chronic disease are very helpful. Mm -hmm. But you've got to have that diagnosis made first by the doctor and not by Dawn <laughs> on Google. We call it the freaked out meter. <laughs> Dawn will kill you. <laughs> All the way on this end. But of course, you know, it, it, it's natural. It's kind of how we do things these days. I always say that people get on the internet to try and figure these things out. So how do you, I know you mentioned going to reputable websites, but that mommy in you is always going, but I need, I'm, I feel helpless. How do you find that balance, Dr. Sue? Well, my patients, I try to tell them, really stay off the internet mm -hmm. until you've come to see the doctor. That's mm -hmm. what I say. Don't go there. Mm -hmm. I told you about that doc, that man in my office who was Googling while I was in the office with his child and telling me I was wrong. And paying you his copay. When he was upset, he's like, you're wrong. And I'm like, okay, Dr. Google's not right. Um, so I think you go to the doctor, you give the doctor a really good history. Histories are so important. I learn every day in my practice, listening and taking a good history is still more than half of medicine. Go through your symptoms, keep a, accurate uh, of all your symptoms. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to go home and Google, flu afterwards, <laughs> right. since we've told you you have the flu, fine. Right. Now, tell me this, Dr. Sue, because especially here in <laughs> Texas, these urgent care places are popping up all over the place. When you start thinking about taking your kiddo to the doctor, are you thinking urgent care or are you thinking pediatrician? Sometimes it's hard to get in to see you. I still think you should go to your pediatrician, and we talk in when pediatrics about having a medical home. It's really important that your pediatrician knows you. I know you, Dawn, as a mother. I know how you parent. Mm -hmm. I know you'd freak out. Right. I know Amy doesn't. I mean, you've those are nice things to know about your patients. Right. So whenever possible, and I have kind of, you know, kind of jumped on a few of my parents who have gone to urgent cares and then come to me to, quote, fix it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why did you go there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So many times, if you can get off the Internet on a Sunday and get through till Monday morning and then go see your own doctor, it's really helpful. I think that mm -hmm. your doctor will give you better care and maybe not do as many tests, which I also find disconcerting that we do a lot of tests at these urgent care mm -hmm. that you might not need. Sure, sure. And, and I bet a lot of people come to you and they're like, sitting at home at their desk, they probably had 50 questions to ask you. And they get there, their kid's screaming, and then they're going to forget. forget the questions. Yeah. Any tips on making sure that they have that information when they come in to see you? Well, the young... Y'all are young. The young patients come in, it's on their um, iPhone. Mm -hmm. They pick up that iPhone, and I know where they're going. When it used to be, they picked up a yellow legal pad. Now it's an <laughs> iPhone. 
<laughs> I'm getting smarter. So, so take notes. Take notes. Um, if you have two parents there, it's really helpful. One can bounce the baby, mm, yeah. and deal the baby, and the other one can take notes. Yeah. And then I tell them, you know what? I'm just a phone call away. Call mm -hmm. me back. If you get home and you've forgotten something, I'll call you back. That's awesome. We are loving having uh, Take Charge Parenting on our new station. And tell us about what's coming up today's show. Oh, we have a great show today. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about our hot topics, which is one of my favorite parts. And we're going to talk with Dr. Pete Stavanoa about childhood depression, especially among teenagers, which mm. I unfortunately see a lot of mm -hmm. and then we're going to talk at the end of the show about well at the beginning actually some more tips about flu yes some okay. interesting data that just came out from the cdc which is confusing me and <laughs> i'm sure lots of other people too y'all are doing a great job on that show well thank you we're having fun be sure to check out take charge parenting right after the broadcast today for more helpful tips like this plus it airs on sundays at noon you can also get more information at kidsdr.com Okay, when the broadcast returns, a special treat for you. Lisa's chatting it up with talk show host turned film director and writer, John Stewart. Stay with us.